Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my opinion, these kind of problems are very likely for coming years for ITJ, especially at the advanced level. And uh, it's not so straightforward, although there are only few equations required to solve this problem properly. But a lot of students get confused, I have seen that. And uh, once I describe the problem, think about it, how would you approach this problem? And if you want to pause the video, then do it and try to solve this problem and then come back and see the solution. This is definitely going to give you some concepts and uh, also some of the insights, especially related to the coefficient of restitution and how to deal with that and some of the other concepts related to mechanics and the problems in the mechanics. Okay, so let's read out the problem first. A disc of mass m and radius r is hinged to the wall from its edge and can swing freely from the hinge. Okay, so as you can see, let's call this O. Okay, a ball of mass m is moving horizontally with velocity u and hits the disc at a point which makes angle theta from the vertical line. So this is the mass m, and it is traveling with u, and it hits at this point. Let's say p, and if you join the line to the center and then it is making angle theta with the vertical okay the coefficient of restitution is e it's given and it's also given that after collision the ball travels downward vertically okay and then the question is what is the angular velocity of the disc and also we can find the this velocity let's say call it v1 okay after the collision so we need to find these two unknowns okay so what do you think how do we approach this problem so what about let's say let me ask you some of the questions also okay so let's say linear momentum okay since this, there is a collision happening do you think linear momentum is conserved okay what is your answer so the answer is no okay it's not conserved think about it why it is not conserved and then i will explain what about angular momentum and let's say about point o okay this point is it conserved okay what do you think so answer is yes okay Linear momentum is not conserved. Why is linear momentum not conserved in, let's say, this direction? If this is x and this is y, in either of these directions, the linear momentum is not conserved. And the answer is, once the ball hits the disc, then disc will try to rotate. But there will be some forces here, you know, in both x and y direction. And there will be resultant force in some direction. So the the resultant force either in x or y okay they are not zero hence we cannot uh, assume that the linear momentum is conserved okay but the angular momentum about o is conserved and why because torque about o is zero okay there is no torque acting at point o okay and when this is zero then the angular momentum is conserved okay and about o okay so i hope you see these these two facts okay clearly there should not be any confusion here so let's start solving the problem let's assume that the velocity for the ball is v1 and when it says vertically then probably it's giving you the uh, the direction also and uh, so that's something that is given the direction of the ball after collision and we know that since it is hinged at point o the disc it will try to rotate about point o with let's say angular velocity omega okay i have uh, earlier in one of my videos i have explained it that when you see the coefficient of restitution either when it's there or it's not there because either it's one or zero or it is some other value like 0 0.5 0 0.7 whatever the use of e should be done using this formula and you will never get it wrong 
let me first write it here and I am repeating this because in one of my earlier videos I have done that. So I will explain what I mean by this formula. Okay. So when we have let's say any two objects, let's say this is object and this is another object, so one and two. I am just deliberately taking some arbitrary shape here and when the ball or the object 1 hits the object 2 and it gets deflected and there is a coefficient of resistance E then we compute this E based on the velocity, approach velocity and the velocity of separation. So what essentially it means is that you draw a normal okay, and you name the two objects using 1 and 2 and prime is the velocity after collision. So V2 n prime means velocity of object 2 along the normal okay that's why n is there after collision okay and it's very simple to remember also and v1 and then you would guess velocity of object 1 along the normal after collision and v2 n is velocity of object 2 along the normal before right collision and v1 n is velocity of object 1 along the normal before collision okay that's it so in this case we need to draw the normal so let's draw the normal normal is going to be perpendicular to the tangent this is tangent so normal is actually this line okay so let's call this n okay and this angle is theta so this angle is also theta then let's just write this equation you call this as one object one and this is object two okay let's call that therefore though using this equation the e would be and let's have the velocity center of mass of the disk let's call the velocity v2 okay when it starts rotating so this is v2 n prime so 2 is this object so after collision what is the speed of object 2 along the normal line so that is minus v2 sin theta okay it's easy to see that because this one is 90 minus theta okay minus the ob velocity of object 1 along the normal line so after collision so v1 is the velocity after collision for object 1 and along the line is v1 cos theta divided by velocity of object 1 along the normal so this is the initial velocity which is u and it is minus u sin theta and the velocity of object 2 before collision is 0 okay so therefore what we get is v2 sin theta plus v1 cos theta equal to e u sin theta okay so this is our first equation okay let's just box this and call it a okay now we know that we cannot have linear momentum conserved in any of the direction so we can't use linear momentum but angular momentum is conserved so what is the angular momentum um, before collision so it's m u and this distance right distance from here till here right so it is m u r 1 plus cos theta equal to let's say i is the uh, uh, moment of inertia about o for the disk and omega plus for the object one again after collision it is v1 and this distance which is r sin theta so m v1 r sin theta 
Okay, so this is the equation two. Okay, so more or less our job is done. The rest, what is the V two? V two is nothing but omega and r. So we can simply write V two as omega r. Okay, and what do you think i is? So i is three by two m r square. So now we have got all the variables uh, properly defined and the equations also defined. So we can simply just plug in i and v two in this equation, and so from one from a we get omega r sine theta plus v one cos theta equal to e u sine theta. And from here, if we just use i, then what we will get is m u r one plus cos theta equal to three by two m r square omega plus m v one r sine theta. Right. So what we can do is. Use the v one from here and put it here. So we will have equation only with omega, which is unknown. So m u r one plus cos theta equal to three by two m r square omega plus m r sine theta and v one is e u sine theta minus W R sine theta divided by cos theta. Okay, so this is three by two m r square omega plus m r sine square theta by cos theta and e u minus m r Sine square theta by cos theta r square omega. Right? Okay. So we'll just take the u on the left hand side. So we'll have m u r one plus cos theta minus e sine square theta. By cos theta, equal to three by two m r square omega minus m r square omega sine square theta by cos theta. Okay, so m u r cos theta plus cos square theta minus e sine square theta. And cos theta in the denominator will cancel out. So three, we can just take three by two um, m cos theta minus m sine square theta, and we have r square omega outside. Okay. Therefore, what we get is omega equal to m u by r. Okay, and then cos theta plus cos square theta minus e sine square theta divided by three by two m cos theta minus m sine square theta. So that's the answer for omega. Okay, and with this omega, we can also compute the v v one. By plugging the omega in one of these equations here, and then getting the v one. Okay. Now, given that when theta is sixty degree, and e is point five, and m is equal to three m, then we can compute omega as m u by r cos sixty degrees one by two plus one by four minus Three e by four divided by three by two 
m into 1 by 2 minus 3 by 4 m, right? Which is m u by r. And this is 3 by 4, so 3, 1 minus e by 4. And this is 3 m minus m. Here, 4, 4 will cancel out. Okay. And then finally, we put m u by r and 1 minus 0. 0.5 by 3m minus m. We get m u by r, 1 by 2 into 2, and m. So m m cancel, and hence omega equal to u by 4r. Okay. So the answer is actually a, a is the answer. Okay. I leave the computation of V1 to you. You can simply just use this and compute the V1. The most important thing about this problem is to spot that linear momentum is not conserved. So you should definitely check this before solving such problem, but also checking that angular momentum is conserved about O. Now angular momentum about any other point may not be conserved because again, these forces here will act, will create some torque at any other point. So only at this point, the angular momentum is conserved because even if forces are there, the distance is zero, so overall torque is zero. And the second thing is you must learn this. This is the best way to use the coefficient of restitution because this will come very handy in complex situation. In easy situation, you can always write the separation velocity is equal to E times the approach velocity relative and all that, but this is a way to just compute it using some method okay so i want you guys to use this one so once you use the formula for e and then write the angular momentum conservation i think rest is the straightforward you should be able to just solve this problem or these kind of problems very easily so please like the video subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends thanks for watching thank you very much Subscribe and gain access to concepts and tips for doing better in IIT, JE or other examinations. Keep up the great work.